great to see everyone this morning. If you will, turn your hand back to page 180. Stand with me while we sing Nothing But the Blood, page 180. Let's remain standing for prayer, if you will. And you know every week we add to our prayer list, and we want to remind you this morning that uh, Lori C., when she was here in our church, uh, went home to be with the Lord. Her name is Lori Stone now, at, uh, I understand, 42 years of age, and they had a service yesterday at the elementary school in uh, Ashland City. And then also this week, uh, a young man that we saw grow up in our church also, Ryan Thompson, uh, was trying to break up a fight or stop a fight. And uh, six people just about beat him to death. And uh, he is, I went to see him two times, prayed with him twice. I just went back and asked his dad, Brother Dickie, where he was now because I heard they had moved him from North Chris and for rehab. And Dickie just told me, uh, as of today, he's being discharged to go home uh, with crutches. And uh, we had special prayer this week. They thought uh, the doctors thought that we're not going to be able to save his foot. So, with ten pieces of metal, bolts, nuts, and screws, he's able to wiggle his toes and able to move that foot. And Dickie said the color looks good in it, so still anything could happen. The infection of any kind, uh, a bad jar, fall, uh, he really needs our prayers for the next several weeks or days till this heals. I was there when the doctor came in, and uh, and I, I got a feeling Ryan's a pretty tough young man, and he was to the top of his voice saying, what are you doing? And he used a few choice words. <laughs> he turned to me and apologized, but... Uh, the doctor told him, he said, son, let me tell you something. The bone in your leg is not even in the right place. And he said, your body's trying its best to get the bone back where it needs to be. And uh, so on the other side of that, all of them, I understand that was in the process of beating him and were caught and arrested and jailed. And uh, the last I heard, they have all made bond except one. And uh, let's just pray that uh, the law will take its course and do what needs to be done. So remember, Ryan, remember the Stone family, especially Mark, her husband, they have two daughters. Remember them. Um, my book, Lori, uh, I've always loved that young girl. Watched her grow up. She's been with our family during needs and helped out with two weddings. And uh, She's been good to us. And uh, I know that she's with the Lord. She was ready to go. But at 42, that seems awful young. Do you have any prayer requests you want to mention before we pray? Okay, Lynette? A girl I know, I worked with years ago at Walmart. Anyway, she lives down the road. She is probably about 37 years old. She's been diagnosed with breast cancer. They're going to do chemo and radiation before they do surgery. But they have also found that it's in other areas besides breast cancer. Her family is devastating. Her husband has just lost a sister to cancer last year, and then his brother also has cancer. So that family is never really hard time. Okay, let's remember this request. Melinda had a spell with her heart this week that concerned us. Uh, her heart rate.
rate went up, but it happened immediately after she found out about Lori. Of course, they've known each other for years and years and close to the same age. So, uh, Marlette told us in Sunday school class she seems to be doing better now, but still pray for her. Also, uh, I don't think this has happened before, but I've got three emails. The pastor of the Jolton Baptist Church got this started, and I understand we're meeting, when I say we, all the pastors that can and will, preachers, meeting in the First United Methodist Church in Iceland City this coming Thursday at 10 o'clock to pray for the upcoming election and also to learn about some laws and how we as pastors can, what we can share with the congregation and what we can't lawfully. And you pray even though you won't be in the meeting with us, our president of our college, Dr. Matt Pinson, will be bringing the main message as well as several other preachers. And Brother Randy Corn might be speaking also. So uh, make that an object of prayer. It'll be three counties. We hope to fill the church with just preachers uh, and pastors to pray for this election. It is so important. Please go vote. Uh, don't just say, hey, there's no use. That's how the enemy wins. Right. Uh, we need to. We need to vote. Anybody else? Jim. I like the church. It's bad enough to travel when you feel good sometimes, but when you're really sick, that's bad. Okay, let's pray and ask the Lord to uh, be with us today and remember those that are camping and uh, been beautiful weather, my goodness. And remember our church and today's sermon. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to assemble here and we could go on and on with prayer requests and Lord we do pray for those that have lost loved ones that's a major major thing it's a life changing thing we pray for Mark we pray for the daughters we pray Father that you'll be with the other family members but Lord I believe we can stand here today and know that Lori's home with you. And I pray, Lord, that you will be with these that are sick due to food poison. Lord, I pray for Ryan. I got to talk with him a long time. And Lord, may the words that he's heard from your word and from me, may they find a resting place. And Lord, I ask you to be with the other requests that were made and the prayer meeting that the pastors in three counties will have Thursday may we see results immediately bless us now as we look into your word as we have this service bless the singing bless Lord those that might be here with special needs we pray that you'll supply those needs today for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. Let me share just two or three announcements with you. Uh, there's no evening service today because of people camping and others are going camping. And not a, nothing wrong with that with families getting together. I think if I can complain about one thing in my life, I didn't spend enough time with my girls. And uh, my family when uh, 
they were young because they grow up and they get away fast. They just do. But uh, remember them. This is Labor Day, and I'm going to preach about that. And then homecoming is uh, the 15th of October. It will be the third Sunday in October. And uh, we voted Wednesday night. What's the name of the, the New Journey? New Journey Quartet from Clarksville will be with us. Uh, we doubled our attendance at Brother Harry's house Wednesday night. Uh, it was a good group, and it really made him feel good. And so this Wednesday will be here at the church. Brother Teddy will be teaching. And by the way, everybody that was in our class would say amen. We have an excellent Sunday school class this morning. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Makes me just want to listen to him. You know, preachers need to be fed every once in a while. And he did an excellent job. So you come Wednesday night to support him. Uh, I'll be here. But uh, they get my battery charged. And then uh, remember to pray for Brother Jim. We're so glad he's able to be with us today. This hot weather, even if you're in good health, is miserable. And he's able to be with us. So thank the Lord. That's all the announcements that uh, I'm going to make at this time, and I'll let uh, Nicole come and lead us in a, another song. I can't remember who sent me. Uh, Boyd Kramer's grandson playing some of Floyd Kramer's piano music. And I love good piano music. I do. Uh, so I was on my phone, so yesterday while I was, or Friday when I was traveling and working, I run my battery down just playing that piano music over and over, and I thought, I'm going to bring a recorder up here and get uh, Lynette to put me some new Lord Kramer music down <laughs> on a cassette. And then I thought, and it showed the pictures. They were in a large church, several people there, and they had their cameras, you know, taking pictures of him as he was playing. And I thought, well, that's not worship songs. And then I justified it by saying, it's talent night. It's got to be talent night. But uh, then I put my phone in my back pocket because I dropped it out of my shirt pocket and almost run over it with a lawnmower. That would have scattered gossip everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't want to do that. But uh, I just run my battery down listening to uh, the piano music. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to uh, St. John's Gospel chapter 6 and uh, verse 27 and then 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 St. John 6 27 and then first put your finger there 1 Corinthians 3 9 And I want to speak to you about, and I know uh, Labor Day, you ain't supposed to labor, they tell me, but I've never seen a time when uh, people didn't work, even on Sunday now, it don't mean a thing. Just keep right on working. But some people, 
that I spoke with this week to thank the Lord our family does the least we can do on Sunday. Then I thought of some families that do the least they can do any other day. <laughs> and, uh, but I want to speak to you just four or five things that I think would be a blessing to us to remember working for God. And uh, the Sunday school class went right along with this. Uh, I think Brother Teddy could get up and do that again and have almost the same message I've got today. But his was more of Israel and their enemies and Moses and Joshua. But I want to read first out of John chapter 6. In verse 27, the Bible says, Labor not for meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him that hath God the Father or him that hath, yeah, God the Father sealed. And then turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, or chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. The Bible says, For we are laborers, Together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. I want to take the first part of that verse. For we are laborers together with God. And I'll mention more as time permits. So go the Lord with me and pray for me and with me. Our Father, we thank you for being able to pray, and it seems like this week we've prayed with more people and with serious problems. And Lord, we know that praying is no time wasted. It's the best time that could be spent because we're calling on the greatest power this world has ever known. Lord, you're able to do exceeding above what we ask or think. And these verses that I just read in the hearing of your people and in 80 countries, these verses teach us who we're working with and for and that you're with us. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless the next few minutes the hearts of people that are here. We pray for those that are not here, for Brother Harry and for others. And we thank you for our visitors. We thank you that Sergio's with his family and pray, Father, that we'll continue to see families gather together to hear the Word of God. We ask you, Lord, to bless us now. Hide us behind the cross. What we say may it find a lodging place in the hearts of the hearers. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to you today about labor not for that which perishes. And it seems like that's what we labor for, the things that perish. But we're to labor for everlasting fruit and God being our helpers. The first thing that I want to mention to you today is the last scripture that I read to you in 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with God. I've been in factories before where I've had people to work with me and you couldn't do any more than they would do and they'd try their best to find out the slowest way to do it 
and you just couldn't make production, you couldn't get the job done because of the one that was supposed to be holding up the other end, just lazy. But I don't know about you, but I think if I'm going to work, time goes a lot faster when you're working. Instead of just trying to kill time, do something productive. You're hurting everybody when you don't work. And uh, see if you can get it done. And hopefully, uh, this is, and I'm going to give you four words. Work with enthusiasm. Be glad. I've heard my wife say many times, especially in the last year, I don't know if my back, my hips, my wrists, I just don't know how much longer I can do this. And then her last words going out the door many times. As I guess we ought to be thankful to God that we're able to even go to work. Because there's a lot of people not able to go to work that would change places with you tomorrow and would brag about having a job and being able to go to work. And so, do it with enthusiasm. Those who uh, like interest and they like favor, uh, they're ineffective in their work. And they cause other people to be ineffective. Working for God they give the impression that the gospel is not important. And that bothers me so much that even preachers give the impression that the gospel is not important. I heard one of my favorite preachers preach just one day last week, and, or maybe a week before last now, and he said that several of my peers tried to get me not to preach or not to try to start a church. And he said, uh, now I've got one of the largest churches there are. And he said, uh, people say, how in the world do you know as much Bible as you know? He said, because I wasn't on the golf course with the rest of you. And I wasn't on the shooting range with the rest of you. I was in my office on my knees praying and studying the Word of God. And that means so much. It means a whole lot to uh, be enthusiastic about the work that we do for the Lord. And being Labor Day, we must work with divine inspiration. We must work with zeal. We must work with enthusiasm. And that brings results of us being God followers, God helpers, God workers. And I want to read to you out of Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 11, in just a minute. When we leave the impression that the gospel is unimportant with people, we forget what Matthew 6.33 says. And I've quoted that enough you ought to be able to quote it back to me. That to put God first and everything else will find its place. And so we see that we must work with inspiration, with zeal, if you don't like what you're doing and you don't like the job you're doing, look for something that you like to do. I got a text this week saying that uh, my son-in-law and my daughter is taking me out to dinner tonight. It's my birthday. I got a text that my wife's taking me out tomorrow for breakfast because she celebrates my birthday. I'm going to get to go to a ball game tonight and watch my grandson play his first little league game. And he said, I get to travel all over the state of Tennessee and make friends everywhere I go. And he said, I absolutely love my job. 
Glenn Poston said those words. I got them on my phone and, and I read it and I thought, I wish every preacher could stand behind the pulpits of their churches today and quote what Glenn said, I love my job. It's the best job in the world when things are going good. It's one of the worst jobs when things are going bad. And to stand somewhere and bite your tongue and keep your mouth shut when you know you ought to be able to say something and listen and put up with stuff. I don't know how many people have come and said, if I was doing it, this is the way I'd do it. Well, why don't you do it? They won't do it, but they'll sure tell you how to do it. You know, there's people like that everywhere. But I don't need to do what everybody tells me to do. I need to do what He tells me to do. Amen. And the rest of it will fall in place. Matthew 6.33 I've learned that a long time ago. Had somebody in our church walk up to me a few years ago and because they just saw me being under attack by two or three people verbally. And the lady walked up to me when they walked away and she said, you're the strongest man I know. And I thought, why are you saying that? And she said, because I couldn't have stood there and took what you just took. And I said, well, listen, I've got somebody else fighting that battle. Amen. I didn't have to say nothing. The Bible answers itself. Listen to these words. In uh, Romans. Let me find the verse. Romans 12, 11. And I'm going to read several verses. It tells us, don't be slothful in business. That means don't be lazy. It means to enjoy what you're doing or do the best job you can. And it's still talking about working for the Lord. I want to read these verses. Listen to the message you get all the way through verse 21. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, counting instant in prayer, or continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality, blessed, bless them which persecute you, not like John Hagee said, Lord with a brick. But this is the Lord speaking through Paul. Bless those that persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them which weep. Be of the sound or the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own eyes or in your own conceit. He says in verse 17, Recompense, that means pay back or do back. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Two wrongs never make a right. And he said, Recommend, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as in you is or lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. On the other side of that coin, it's saying that there's some that you just can't live at peace with. So ignore them and walk away. And it says in verse 19, Dearly beloved, 
Avenge not yourself, but rather give peace unto wrath. For it is written, and this is God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. People are not getting away with anything. It's not your fight, it's not my fight, it's His fight. Amen. And He will take care of it. He's not forgot it. People think they're getting away with running you down for living for the Lord or trying to put you out of commission for living for the Lord. You can't tell some people that you're a Christian because that's fighting words to them. They think you are putting them down and lifting yourself up, saying you're better than anybody else. And people in Swannanoa this morning will be listening to this. And one man, Ralph McMahon, I told you before, when he learned I was moving, going to Bible college, he said, call me up the night before, and he said, how's the tires on your car? I said, well, they're not too good, but we'll make it. He told me the tire shop to go to. He said, go in there and put you four new tires on before you leave. But do me a favor. Charge it to my account, but do not tell him you are a minister of the gospel. Well, I listened to part of that. And i done part of it. And I thanked him in front of uh, Stacy and two or three others when we were there. Ralph came to church and I went back there around him and I hugged him and I said, I've never forgot you buying me four brand new tars before I left. I said, but i got to confess to you, I waited till the tires was on. I waited till they were charged to your account. Then I told the man I was a preacher. <laughs> then I told him that a man in our church was paying for this. And I said, it caught him off guard. And I said, but I got to witness to him a little bit. I hope it don't cause you trouble. Well, you know, sometimes we've got to obey God and not man. Amen. And I'm glad that I got the witness to Him. And I'm glad that uh, Ralph didn't get mad at me even then. He said, I still love you, Brother Ronnie. I started to say, well, go out and look at my tire. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't do that. Verse 20 says, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. Boy, that's hard to do, man. If he thirst, give him drink. For it in, for in so doing, you're heaping coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. The Bible's telling us that if we overcome evil with good, we're heaping coals of fire on their head. And they'll not get away from it. That's hard. And I realize when we get to thinking about it, we sometimes don't want to help people. But then I get to thinking, Jesus helped me when I did not deserve being helped. But yet, He helped me. The second thing that I want you to see is found in Matthew 9, 37. He says, for us to work with earnestness. He says, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I don't know when I pastored a church that cares more about the outside of the church and how it looks and keeps it up. 
and I wasn't paid to say this and might make somebody mad for saying it, but a man not even a member of our church pays for most of that. Randy Justice. And he said, Brother Ronnie, I, I want it to look better and I want it to look good for Mother's Day and homecoming and Fourth of July and other stuff. And would to God we had more people that cared about how the house of God looked. And I come in one night this week and last week and I thought, man, the church looks so good. I wonder who's been here. And I probably could name on one hand and I've Certainly missed Jeanette Whitmore since she's had to stay with Jim a lot and she went through sickness doing some jobs that just couldn't get done. Lynette Garrison, you don't know how many times she's been here by herself. Teresa, Lynette Perry. But what I'm saying is we've got people that just show up and they don't look around to see who they can call to get to come and do the job. They do what needs to be done. And they don't brag about it. But they get it done. And that's what we need to do. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 37, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I can remember having church workings, advertising it three weeks in the bulletin, and seven people show up. And I'll never forget if I live to be another year old that all the years that six or seven showed up, I never seen one of them's hands come out of his pocket. What are you doing over there? Well, I, I wouldn't do it that way if I was doing it. I'd do it some other way. <laughs> room to room. What are you doing in here? You're doing that all wrong but with the hands in the pocket. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Few years. Never seen his hands come out of his pocket. Why did he come to a work? There's a few of us here today know who I'm talking about. There's a few of us here today that learn to pay him no attention. <laughs> and just go ahead and get the work done. But we need to work for the Lord. And He's keeping the record. And guess what He says in Revelation? I am coming in an hour that you think not. And I'm coming to bring the payday. You will receive your just reward. And if you've done it for praise of men, you won't receive anything. But if you've done it to please Him, my goodness, ain't a bank in Springfield, Tennessee got enough to pay for what the Lord's going to do for you. If we do, the harvest is plenteous, labors are few. Many Christians are unconcerned. They fail to take their soul winning responsibility serious. We hear it. My wife mentioned that in Sunday school this morning. She said, James 1 22, said, Don't be just hearers of the word, be doers of the word. I've called. Way before church time, David Johnson's phone number, and he said, I'll be right on when the air wouldn't come on. I've called Henry before at night. said, Henry, I, 
I can't find out what this problem is. Well, I'll be there in a few minutes. And the story goes on and on. Working outside, me and one of the deacons and Brother Dickey, major job. And here come people, who's the pastor? That didn't happen once or twice and goes on. Dicky told me at the end of the day, he said, I could not do your job. I couldn't handle everybody begging and everybody wanting to rip you off. You don't know what you're going to run into. My days are never the same. What a difference a phone call makes. But I've learned to work with enthusiasm for the Lord. I want people to know I enjoy what I do. And then work with expectation. In John 6, 29, the Bible said, this is the work of God. It's the most important work in the world. Some Christians lack faith. When working for God, they don't expect anything to happen. And so guess what? Nothing happens. You've got to work for Him by faith. Expecting something to happen. And I know you've heard this illustration over and over and over, and especially a few years ago. Uh, when we were in a drought and people were praying for rain and heard a preacher say, yeah, they had a prayer meeting at their church to pray for rain and 12 people showed up. One of them brought an umbrella. Didn't expect no rain. He wants us to pray in faith believing that God hears our prayer and He's going to answer. We must work with confidence. It takes faith to receive Christ's blessings. It also takes faith to bring others to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Romans 1.17 And then the next one, we need to work with endurance. We both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. We both labor and suffer reproach. The people are going to make fun of you if you tell them you're a Christian. I don't matter. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Amen. He says this. Many Christians take the easy way out. The Bible says, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. But many Christians want to take the easy way out of work when it comes to endureness, when you have to endure hardship, they quit. You know, when the work gets tough, the tough get going. Somebody was telling me just this week about uh, problems they were having, and oh, it, it was almost, you'd have had to been there, but a real young girl in the bank, looked like she's 18, maybe first job, and skipping a lot of what was said, she said, I wish I could get my credit card paid down to where yours is, because I just paid it off. And she said, oh my Lord, the balance you've got on that credit card? And I said, balance? You told me it's zero. She said, I mean available balance. She said, I've got $750 available on mine, and I'm scared to carry it. I said, well, you'll learn. You'll learn. 
She said, don't you find it intimidating to carry more than two or three hundred dollars? I thought, no, because you can't go to Walmart for less than that and get groceries. <laughs> and <nothing. laughs> you just can't. A nickel won't cross the river like it used to. <laughs> but I, I thought it was a little bit comical. But anyway, people quit when it gets hard. You didn't tell me it'd be this hard. I thought I could keep my hands in my pocket and walk around and supervise. To be effective, we must preserve. We must endure difficulties. We must endure distresses without being overcome. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and 5. Things get rough sometimes, but guess who our partner is? We're in business with God. The last word that I want you to remember today is, and I hope you do, we must work with enjoyment. If you don't like what you do, it's a long day. If you don't like what you do, you just can't wait to get out of there and you won't have to do the job. We need to enjoy working for the Lord. We need to be proud that we can be called a Christian. It means Christ-like. We need to be proud of our church. We need to be proud of our country. We need to be proud of our community and our city and our law enforcement. We need to be proud of those that are doing good and keep us safe. We need to be proud of our military. And we need to stand up, speak up, and change what's going on in our world today and enjoy doing it. Listen. In 1 Timothy 5.18 says, The laborer is worthy of his reward. And God's keeping a record. Are you going to have to back up with your hand like this to receive a payday from the Lord? Are you going to be able to hold your head up and say, I've done the best I could. And hear those words, well done. And get paid what God wants to give. I tell you, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to pastor a church where I can preach the truth of God's Word. Amen. I'm blessed to where people want to hear the truth. I'm blessed to be able to open the Word and say, boy, that sounds hard. But I'm blessed that people want to hear the truth. And there's a man in here who goes to another church every once in a while and he said, if you would have preached that and he named the church, he said, they'd been another back door where they just threw you out of it. But I'm telling you folks, we need to know the truth. And the day I have to quit preaching the truth is the day I'm going to stop preaching. All right. The last thing, I've already mentioned the word. Those who work grudgingly are ineffective. I don't want to work with somebody that complains all the time. You know, I don't mind working. And I don't put myself above people that do work. I've been over here many times, rolled my sleeves up and went to work. But I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed working for the Lord. Every church I've ever pastored, I've enjoyed work days because we're doing it for Jesus. And payday will come one day. And I'm going to preach that before long.
told Kenny Norton, I said, have you ever heard Robert E. Lee's sermon on payday Sunday? He said, never heard it. I said, you're going to one day. I'm working on it. But the labor is worthy of his reward. Dickie's told me several times they couldn't pay me enough to do what you do. But work, you take good care of me. But working happily brings results. Many are seeking satisfaction and are attracted to happy Christians. You know, I love to be around. I don't know if there's anybody here today that loves a life anymore than I do. I'm as big as cut up as anybody I know. I've even called people back and in years past and say, what in the world did you say to me that got me so tickled? I forgot. <laughs> Life's so hard, I forgot. You know, even David Patterson, he's not here today. We've, he volunteered a whole week, and I volunteered a week, and we went to the children's home. And we put six bathrooms in up there. I mean, dug in the ground, put the rough end in, and cut through the timber. And we'd go out. We wouldn't eat him, you burgers, for those of you that were in that group. But we'd go to Ryan's Steakhouse at night and eat supper and the children's home tried to pay for it and we wouldn't accept it. But I don't know, he got me laughing so hard, I thought, I, I had to pull a car over. I said, if the Tennessee State Trooper sees me the way I'm laughing and all over the road, I'll get arrested for something. I literally had to pull the car over and stop. My jaws hurt, my belly hurt. You know those belly rolls that you just... Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody worked for God was that happy? All the time. What a difference we'd make in this world. And folks, I'm telling you, that's the attitude we need to leave here with today. It's Labor Day, but for the rest of my life, I'm going to enjoy working for the Lord. Enjoy it because you're going to get paid a lot more than you think. It's coming from Him. Let's stand and we'll be this place. I ask Brother David Johnson to get this message in prayer. And no church tonight. Brother Teddy's teaching Wednesday. And he does half as good Wednesday as he did this morning. You're going to miss a big place. Our Lord, Spirit, and Lord, and Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for the blessings you've given us, Father. We thank you for this message that you laid on Brother Ronnie's heart to bring us, Lord. We ask, Father, that you be with those that have been mentioned on the prayer request, Lord. Be with those that have been injured and are sick with different diseases, Father. Ask that you put a healing hand on them, Father. As you watch over us and lead us and guide us, Father, and bless us and bring us back to the next point in time, Father. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.